We already know that Andy Stanley thinks the problem with Christianity is the Bible. Part of the problem with Christianity is that when we grew up, we were taught the Bible. But where did he get this crazy idea from? Certainly he couldn't have gotten it from a Christian. I heard that this was the word of God, and I've always believed that. No, no, no. And he couldn't have gotten it from someone who's educated in theology. No, Andy is taking his cues on the Bible from an atheist. (gasps) Yes, you heard me right. I can go into any Barnes & Noble blindfolded and pull a book off a shelf, which is going to have more relevance, more wisdom than the Bible. And I think it explains his evangelistic style. However, in trying to reach those who just won't love God and Anyway, has Andy actually undercut the very foundation of the faith that we would preach to them? Now, let's listen to Andy in his own words. This is, I think, an important thing. I do a lot of Andy Stanley videos, and I do so because he just honestly seems to be quite a lightning rod for controversy. He seems to say things that just draw lots of attention. Sometimes I wonder if he says them just in order to draw attention. But I think for the average Christian out there, maybe the average pastor, I think what we can see in him are pitfalls that we should not fall into. Because as I'm going to show you here, a lot of what he does is actually destructive to the very faith that he's trying to preach. And unfortunately, he just seems to think he's smarter than everybody else in the room when he's doing and saying the things that he says. And so my purpose today is to inspire you and to try to convince you in your preaching and your teaching and your writing to tether the faith of the next generation and maybe some of this generation to tether the faith, and that's the phrase I want you to hang on to, to tether the faith of this generation and the next to the event of the resurrection rather than the inspiration, infallibility, or the authority of the Bible. Okay, so this is his big premise that he kind of starts off with here. And he's basically trying to say that we should not find our authority in the Bible, but in the people who wrote it. I I know it doesn't make any sense to me either, because if we find the authority in the people who wrote the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, etc. And we don't have access to those people today. And the Bible itself is our only attachment to them or knowledge of what they taught. Then how can our modern teachings carry any authority at all? They can't because we just undermined the very foundation of the authority with which the apostles taught. So this is his basic premise. And I I, I didn't realize this until I saw this video about where it came from. I knew it was part of his apologetic and how he was trying to, you know, reach uh, atheists. But as you'll see in a moment, he actually got the idea from an atheist. Oh, good. No lightning. So let me say that one more time. Did you catch that? He thought he was going to get struck by lightning. My, my, and I'll, we'll talk about this for a few minutes. And you can talk bad about me after I leave. You have permission to do that. No, my, don't worry. My intention and my heart's desire, we because I think you're uniquely qualified to do this, is you to don't, begin though. from now on of the Bible. Okay. You all know the word oxymoron, right? Like something that just totally contradicts itself, and then it, it kind of implodes and falls in on itself. It can't, it's like a self-neutralizing statement. That That's kind of what he just did there. We're tethering our faith to the resurrection that the Bible tells us about, and not to the Bible itself self, but the Bible itself is the only thing that tells us about the resurrection because we haven't met anyone personally that saw the resurrected Jesus. So if we undermine the Bible, then we actually undermine the thing that you're wanting us to tether our faith to. You see what I'm saying? Where it should have been tethered all along and where the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John tethered theirs. Now, let me tell Mm. you why. I I think this is just an inaccurate statement, in my opinion. It was kind of interesting in the beginning of the video, and I didn't play the whole thing for you. There is a link in the description if you want to take a look for yourself. But I I didn't realize he actually, I'm assuming, considers himself a dispensationalist. He used a different word to describe himself. He, He said in the opening to this message here that he considers himself a sequentialist. But then he apparently explained that he made this word up 
just because there's a lot of negative connotations attached to the word dispensationalist, because a lot of people, a lot of educated people, especially from the Reformed camp of which I am, would look at dispensational theology like it's kind of dysfunctional. Dispensationalism basically cuts up the scriptural record and says that there were different like periods of church history and God worked differently. He even had different plans of salvation, at least full-blown dispensationalism, classic dispensationalism. If you've ever read the Left Behind series and, you know, How Lindsay's Late Great Planet Earth, and you're familiar with, you know, all these teachings on the rapture and all these different things, the seven-year tribulation, the eschatology is where everybody is very familiar with dispensationalism. That eschatology comes from dispensationalism. I didn't realize he was a dispensationalist. I mean, he can call himself whatever he wants to call himself, but apparently he, he actually is a, a dispensationalist. So if you are a theological person, then, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe take note. But my point is here that I, I think he's just flat out wrong on this. I don't think that the apostles rooted their faith, all, the totality of their faith, on the resurrection. In fact, the resurrection by itself means nothing. It, it just means that you're following a ghost around. You know, you're following a, some kind of, you know, he, this is a different kind of dude. I don't know what context he was born into or what the heck all of his teachings mean, but I'm following a ghost. Around. I mean, that's, that's basically what just the resurrection by itself without preceding scripture means. In fact, let me just read Peter's view of scripture for you. This is from... Second Peter chapter 1, he says, For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus in power. Now, what's he talking about here? He's, he's talking about the stories of the Old Testament. Did Peter or the apostles or anybody in their time, did they actually see the stories unfold? Did they meet Moses? Per- well, I guess Peter did on top of the mountain of transfiguration. Did anybody else meet Moses personally? No. Were they there when Moses was given the Ten Commandments? No. Th- they didn't see these things. They believed them how? Through Scripture, through scriptural revelation. And, and I think it's kind of ridiculous to suggest that the ancients could possibly have believed in anything other than a young earth. It's, it's just, quite frankly, it's not possible. And let's take it all the way back to the Israelites, the ones who were walking around in the wilderness, you know, the ones that, that you know, had original copies of the book that Moses wrote, and they heard Moses speak it to them. What did the apostles believe about Scripture? They believed that it was the word of of God. Peter goes on to say, we also have the prophetic message as something, listen to his words here, completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Wow, the prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets through human, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now, that's, that's incredible when you think about it. That's incredible. It seems to me that the disciples and the apostles, they believed in the inerrancy of Scripture. How else would they know who Jesus was? The writings that they've given us are actually interpretations of the Old Testament. When you read Paul's letters and when you read the Gospels, they're taking Old Testament passages and they're from from where? Are they talking to the source? No. They're taking them from the written down record that they had. They're treating it as reliable and it's based on that that they understand the meaning of Jesus' resurrection, which, of course, they knew to be true because they saw that firsthand. But, you know, the idea that that we're somehow going to make the Scriptures themselves secondary to the resurrection, especially when you think about this, think about the fact that we haven't seen Jesus resurrected. If our hope is anchored in something that we don't even have a reliable historical record of, then we are lost. I think this lost. is a big deal. About nine years ago, I feel like I have everybody's undivided attention. Did you see how I did that? There? Yeah, Okay. So about nine yeah, when years you ago, act like a heretic. Um, I was sitting at home and I'm watching talk a like a heretic. Video of Sam Harris, some of you know smell Sam like Harris, a heretic. Famous atheist, neuroscientist. You get people's and I'm attention. Listening to this, I'm watching this video. Somebody told me to watch, and he's at a university setting, and he is just completely dismantling the Bible, and the crowd is cheering. I mean, every time he makes a, takes a shot at the Bible, they just cheer, and he's doing all the normal stuff that skeptics have done forever. And as I was watching, 
something dawned on me that I'd never thought about before that has rocked my world and, and changed the way I preach and teach. I made the change that almost immediately. Atheism rocks it, your world? It or? dawned I mean, on me that Sam Harris... You never thought about these things ...shared before? an assumption with everybody in the room that was a skeptic or an atheist or an agnostic. Okay, so he's talking about Sam Harris, and I, I'm actually going to take a, just a quick break from Andy so that you can just understand the guy that he's talking about here. He's talking about Sam Harris, you know, well-known atheist, just totally rejects the Bible, thinks it's myths and fables and ridiculous, and modern science has given us everything. No, modern science hasn't produced two world wars and probably a third one here in the near future and, you know, depression and despair and suicide and genocide. No, clearly modern science has been our salvation. Yeah. Let's just grant the possibility that there, there is a creator God who's omniscient, who occasionally authors books. And he's going to give us a book, the most useful book. He's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. And he's going to give us a guide to life. He's got a scribe. The scribe's going to write it down. What's going to be in that book? I mean, just think of how good a book would be if it were authored by an omniscient. You know what I was just thinking as he's talking here? And first of all, I mean, you can see clearly the kind of guy that you want to develop a strategy for evangelism from or for shepherding your church. I mean, you just know that any idea that comes from this is going to be good. But in another sense here, like everything that that this atheist is about to say, can't it be said about our modern day scribes? I mean, isn't that what like everybody who's in an academic institution is today? They're, they're a scribe. They're, they're telling us things. They're writing textbooks. Those books are kind of like our pagan scrolls for the day. They help us to learn how to not be a Christian. They, they teach us how to understand that the Bible isn't true. They teach us to look at it and pull it apart and see all of the flaws or supposed flaws that are in it. These are the scribes of the day. I, I just see, you know, a, a, an irony, I, I guess, in, in what he's saying here. He's, I mean, he himself is almost like a, a modern pagan scribe. I mean, there is not a single line in the Bible or the Quran that could not have been authored by a, a, a first century person. I mean, there's not... You know, I, I really disagree with this point. I think that when I look at the Bible, and I've been studying it for, I don't know, 25, 30 years now, it amazes me more and more with each passing year. And, I, and I've been having these moments lately where something strikes me and I go, this book is really amazing. I mean, it's in terms of human history, and I'm talking about the Bible now, above and beyond the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or some of these other religious texts, the Bible itself, the ethic that it comes up with about God as a loving father, you don't see that in other religions, about God choosing a people, about God having a plan of redemption. And then you, the ethic of it, you package on top of that, the historical elements, incredible. I, there's nothing like it. There's meaning behind everything. And so much of this, atheists just say, it flies right not, over there's there. Not one, one reference to anything. There's, there, there are pages and pages about how to sacrifice animals and keep slaves yeah, there was and who to kill a reason and for that, why. Son. There's mm -hmm. nothing about electricity. There's nothing about DNA. <laughs> there's nothing about how do, infectious diseases. The Bible's the not true because it doesn't tell us about electricity. There, there's... There's nothing particularly useful, and there's a lot of Iron Age barbarism in there and superstition. This does not, I mean, this is not a candidate book. I mean, I can go into a, to, to any yeah, I know barbarism right now, and I'm looking at it, buddy. Global, That's barbarism. And Crazy. Pull a book off a shelf, which is going to have more relevance, more wisdom for the <laughs> 21st century than the Bible or the Quran. I mean, it's really not an exaggeration. It's, it's every one of our specific sciences has superseded and surpassed the wisdom of Scripture. From, from cosmology to psychology to economics, we know more about ourselves than anyone writing the Bible did. And that is a, a distinctly inconvenient fact for, the, the, for anyone w wanting to believe that this book was, was dictated by the, the creator of the universe. Okay, so now that you've got a good face behind this new theology of, of Andy Stanley, I'm going to go back to him just to give you a little bit of context there. I thought it would be helpful. So, and the, and the assumption that he shared with them, he also shared with most Christians, although most Christians haven't thought about it, and the Again, Christians in the room and Christians here. everywhere. And it's an assumption that most of you are raised on. In fact, when I state this, the assumption, part of your that brain will go, well, that can't be true. The Bible is true. feel nervous that I'm saying it's not true. And the assumption is simply this, that the Bible is the foundation of the Christian faith. 
And well, as the Bible whoa. goes, so goes Christianity. That was the assumption he, he leveraged all of his skepticism off of. And it's an assumption that most of the people in most of our churches hold to, even though they've never thought about it because no one's ever said it like that. Okay. Oh, my goodness gracious. So you have an atheist criticizing the Bible, saying that it's not true. This has been going on for thousands of years. So your solution isn't to show maybe that the Bible is a little more reliable than you think there, Mr. Atheist. That's not your solution is to just say, well, we don't need the Bible to prove Christianity anyways. I mean, no, you kind of do. Like, and honestly, He's kind of right about what he's saying there, Mr. Heretic. If he takes the Bible away, if the Bible is, to, if we take the Bible away, we don't have Christianity. We don't have it. That's all we have today is the Bible. That's how we understand who the Holy Spirit is that's literally actually working on the inside of us. That's, that's how we understand. Just look at that look on his face right there. The guy looks like The assumption heretic. being that as the Bible goes, so goes the Christian Lots faith. Of so as Sam Harris Believe dismantles me. the Bible and all confidence yeah. in the Bible, he's dismantling Christianity in his mind and in the minds of the people in the audience. No, he, why would he have no Christianity and high school students and college when students you can do it all everywhere. by and yourself? And when I say the Bible, I'm talking about what if you went to a bookstore and said, I want to see a Bible, what they would bring you. You know, Old Testament, New Testament, chaptered verse, mapped and wrapped. Okay. What other Bible is there? I mean, is, is there another like Bible that he's Bible, talking about? The whole thing. So just to be clear. Okay, exactly. so after Thank I, you for being clear. I watched this. Right. And I thought, this is terrible. And someone needs to do something. And I looked around and it was just me. So I thought, this is like a big deal because I was raised, most Christians were raised. And again, an assumption is a dangerous thing, especially when it goes underneath the surface. Many of you make decisions. We all do based on assumptions that we don't even know about. And as soon as somebody surfaces the assumption, you think, oh, that's not true. And suddenly you make different kinds of decisions. So I read his book, Into Faith. And as hopefully you know, you know, Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett and Christopher, late Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, and my, These are all mainly atheists. those four guys, they responded to 9-11 with this, by publishing books against religion, all religion. You know, who, who is the guy? Who are you? Who's the one out there who sent him this video? Did you not realize what he was going to be doing? Just a few years later, the man is unhitching the Old Testament. He's saying it, it, it's, it's no good. It doesn't matter. Who sent him this video? Who sent it to him? Do you realize what you were unleashing on American Christianity? Christianity. Do and you so understand? Christians came back at Sam Harris so strong after he published Into Faith, he published another little book called Letter to a Christian Nation. You should all read that book. And if your faith survives, it may not. You may be become an atheist. Uh, oh my, okay. A pastor telling his flock, this is actually a lecture at, at Dallas Theological Seminary, that... You should read this book this atheist wrote. And if your faith survives, good for you. I, this is just a thought. But maybe it would be better to show people how the things that the atheist says actually are not true. That might be a, everything. I will, I will tell you. I, look, I'm going back to my main camera just for a second. Here. I want to look you in the eye on this one. That video I played you with the atheist, everything that guy said is lies. Everything he said about the Bible is lies or it's skewed or it's messed up in some way. It's not true. The same way the devil came to Eve in the garden. That's the way atheists come at us today. It sounds like wisdom. They even like to use the word science, which means knowledge. But it's not true. Everything that they say is suspect because they're not coming from a right starting point. So I want you to know that when you hear an atheist speak. Now, let's get back to the heretic. Atheist, after you read it, just warning you, it's a little tiny book written to Christians. If your faith survives, then I want you to ask yourself mm. this question. Would the faith of the high school Good students advice, in my pastor. church survive this book? Would the faith of the college freshmen that are leaving my church survive this book? Would the average faith of the average person in our church survive this, this book? Because so you should he read does it. what skeptics have done forever. <laughs> this book the Bible goes, so goes our faith. It. And that just read it. isn't true. And the reason I know it isn't true is because of something I learned in this building. This is why I think you are uniquely qualified and educated to address this. And so in letter... Treat people like they're uniquely qualified. Because I've said this before, but I always, I always get the impression when he's talking that he knows more than you do or I do. You know, us lowly individuals. That's why he kind of like makes a point real quick and then moves on real quick. Like, cause it's like, 
you don't have a chance to even think that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Andy. The idea that we can unhitch, the idea that the Bible is not necessary for our understanding of Jesus and that somehow we can believe in the resurrection without the Bible, it is really, it, it's just really the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. In fact, I think later on in this, he, he goes on to talk about how, you know, people talk and he explains stuff to him and they get a glazed over look. He's like, when I want to see that glazed over look, it's just like, I, I know more than you do. He writes this book to oh. Christians. You believe the Bible is the most profound book ever written? Yes, and its contents have stood the test of time so well that it must have been divinely inspired. Yes, sir, that's what we believe, you know. The idea that the Bible is a perfect guide to morality is simply it's, astounding given the Who are the these people the he's talking about? I, I don't the understand. the Bible is an ordinary book, and Christ an ordinary like they're man, scared? the basic doctrine of Christianity is these false. These people are scared. And so he does what skeptics have done for generations. He ties the, the that doesn't use the word inerrancy, but the infallibility or the credibility of the oh Bible to the Christian faith. And as it goes, excuse me, as the Bible goes, so goes Christian faith. I mean, if the uh, Bible isn't true, right. you can't say the Bible's true. And if the Bible isn't true, in the minds uh, of just about everybody, goodbye Christianity. That needs to change it. Okay, so again... I just, I feel dumber for even talking about this, but the solution clearly is to, just to use one of Andy Stanley's favorite words, unhitch Christianity from the Bible? Is that, is that so? Because, because the Bible might not be true, let's just not use it all together. The assumption, this, of course, this is not a new assumption. He basically, what Sam does is he does what's... I think, by the way, I think if I remember correctly, the title of his talk here is Your Assumption is Showing. Clever. For generations have done. He invites the faith. He invites Christians. The battleground of their choosing is, is the integrity of the Bible. So he baits us, like gener for generations, skeptics have done this. He baits us into a conversation on whether or not we can defend the entire Bible. Because in his mind, in the minds of so many people, Christianity hangs uh, Again, the, the solution isn't to study the Bible. The solution isn't to, like, it, I, just, I just feel like this is such dysfunctional advice. I mean, just in general for life. It's like, you know, if you feel like you're seeing an athletic trainer and this one exercise is just a little too hard for you to just forget about it and try something else altogether. You know what I mean? Instead of actually trying to improve yourself and make yourself better so that the next time somebody asks you a question about your faith or about the Bible, you can answer them. Wow, I just, I just feel like that's just better advice. You know that. And the thing that makes this so compelling, and the reason we have to do something, I'm absolutely convinced, is because this generation you, of skeptics anybody of the has claw? something previous anybody ever generations did not liar, have. Liar, liar, the claw. An all-access pass to every single person in your coming. church 24 hours a day, seven days it's a week. Gonna they have an all-access pass Bible to from every you. phone, oh, every iPad, every computer, Every middle the school claw. student, every high school Ooh. student, every college student, every wandering husband, ever wonder, every, you know, every wandering mother. And once upon a time, you had to buy a ticket and go to a debate to hear somebody like him talk. Obviously, no more. And to make it worse, now with the click oh, of your so finger. So the problems we have. How is Christianity here? How is it even here? I know mean, oh, God's all powerful. How can he fight Google? Everybody How? in your church can find out. Wait We've got to it. fix this. What else is in the Bible? We've got to stop using that Bible. Discover what's in the Bible without ever owning one, picking one up, even knowing what one looks like. And I know, I know this isn't new information, so it's not like Andy. How old is this guy? No, of course I know you know this, but I just want this to wait to settle in on you that every single student, every single person in your church can find out what else is in the Bible. And what do I mean by what else? All the parts you don't preach and teach about, and the parts you won't what? preach. About. Really? And teach about because you can't really? find any application there. You're never going to get there. And if you go verse by I verse in no the Bible, you'll, you'll never make it to Jesus. Oh my gosh, they can, we'll get there. They can Four fact now, check we'll, me? We'll get there. The point being, this assumption is what I want to focus your attention on. This assumption is absolutely false. And once you surface Then why are you... I should just stop the video right there. Everything the man's going to say is false. That's, I'm going to start off with that clip. It. It's clearly false. But I'm telling you, it yes. hovers. See, it he's hovers in the context telling you of, out of, his own mouth. of just about every single See Christian. It? And skeptics have been put Friends, in, you know, teeing off of that for generations. It. It's false. Once upon a time, who cares? Who's going to read a 300-page book by an atheist? Basically nobody. But those once upon a time days are over. And how has I know, the I church any more of your responded? Books, that's for sure. Skinny jeans and moving lights. I mean, come on. 
We got them, right? I mean, have you heard our band? Have you seen our, I mean, I mean, Hillsong's pretty good. Have you heard our music? I mean, have you seen our preacher? He's so cool. You know, I've got, you know, strategically placed tattoo. I mean, I mean, the world's coming to Christ now. I mean, we, we got it going on, right? You know, I hate when I hear preachers. I'm, I'm a preacher myself, all right? So I'm not outside the tent peeing in. I'm not, that's, I, I'm inside the tent. I, it, it just drives me crazy when I hear preachers say this and they, they just it's like such a cynical view of what the church does and churches do like all these we're just throwing skinny jeans on and we're just uh, we got the laser light show and it's like it's it's just such a cynical view of of church and just in my general experience with churches and pastors like they're good people who are just trying to make a difference for jesus in the world you know they're not just wearing skinny nothing. jeans because they the ch- enjoy it. The church it. has not adjusted at all. We still preach and teach as if it, and the if the Bible church says that settles it for most of all? us, maybe for everybody in this room. Like, like not even a little? We, can, we not only have to abandon it, we have to decide where we're going to place our faith and where the, the, you know, the fertile soil. Is this bothering anybody else? Like, new. Am I the only one? Christians knew all I, this along. is like nails I mean, on, on a, a chalkboard. I am for forcing years. myself to watch it Nobody for you all. One for hundreds of years after that, right? So you can see the so absurdity, the stupidity. Do? I mean, the, the church. The, the mouth of a fool, Proverbs talks about. The first 300 years than the next Look at this guy right here. I mean, the church is sandwiched between temple and empire and survives with no the B by BLE. You know, I, you know it might be a good idea. This is just a suggestion, maybe for Andy. I'm not so sure he has an outline when he's in all of these things. You know, I, th- there was a great clip of him, I think, in the, the last one, the last video I did. You know, he basically comes out on a speaking to his church. And he's like, I, I just talk about whatever I want to talk about anyways on Sunday morning. Like, I, I, maybe write some of this stuff out. Maybe think it through a little bit. You know, think through the implications of, of what you're saying. Story might of just canonicity, right? Might but be a good idea. The, the foundation That's all I'm of our faith isn't a book. Think through the implications I, that I read every day. The foundation of our faith is an event. We just sang about it. In fact, earlier on, Dr. Bailey told this cool story about witnessing to a guy on an airplane, and when he got to the end, a book about not the, to prove the Bible. Don't recommend the Bible. Like, if I can get but, this guy focused on the resurrection of Jesus, then game on. Oh yeah. Besides, and have you? Did your Strategy Bible work? Just the wrong place to dig our trenches and mount our defenses. We have allowed skeptics to bait us and to bait us into the battle for far too long. And I know, as you know, because I went here, given enough calories, given enough, you know, intellect, given enough patience, you can convince somebody that everything in the Bible is trustworthy and our view of inerrancy. I mean, we can support that, right? But you know this, you're a ministry. But don't you're never even gonna try. Have that don't you're never even have that try. Much when Why would we count, try to support count. it? But my bigger point is this. That's not even the issue. The uh, issue oh? is who is Jesus. And the issue is who is Jesus. And how do we know who Jesus is? No, this is where he's wrong again. You got to be a little Calvinist here because I think there's some good truth here about total depravity. The why, the reason people don't believe in the Bible, it, it's not that sometimes they don't think that it's true. It's that they are actually suppressing it. It's that they hate God. It's that they hate the reason when you talk to an that guy that I played you that video a few minutes ago, you know, the, the secret Satan worshiper, that guy hates God. He hates Jesus. He does not understand why the driving forces that are at work on the inside of him and you know just hitting people with the facts sometimes it it isn't going to work they they have to see the truth of it all like and decide to profess their faith in that it's it's a little there's there's more to it than you know just convincing them of other stuff is too hard is it too hard i've i've been studying evidence for the bible for 30 years i mean i could t- i could give you evidence for the exodus i could give you evidence that moses wrote the pentateuch i could give you evidence that uh, mount sinai uh, the location of mount sinai i could give you evidence that there was a global flood i can give you evidence i can give you evidence i can give you evidence like is it is that just too complicated for this pastor? Is it too challenging? Does he not want his people to work hard in his church? And that's too complicated. See, this is where I feel like the arrogance comes in. And it's really assuming that the people you're shepherding are so stupid that they can't possibly defend Christianity. So just defend Jesus' resurrection. That let's just, it's like, does he think, like in his mind's eye, like is he being a he good pastor by doing this? Wasn't it all goes back to the event, and you know this, 
of the resurrection. Bottom line, we do or we don't. I thought we can't know it. I the thought. Bible did how do we know? How do, I don't know my name. You think dispensationally, and because you're not afraid to venture out beyond the battleground that skeptics have baited us into forever. And I'm telling you, you have to get this right. If you care about your children, uh, and your grandchildren, you okay. have to get this right. Our message. You have to stop believing in the Bible. You have to stop. Guys, guys, I am so sorry. I really am. Like, I, this is, it's just, oh, people like this drive me. Okay. So That's all I can much say. Better. And we've been, not we like you, I mean, the people who've come before us, we've been lazy. We've oh, just kind of you know, same old thing. For yourself, over and over buddy. And over I've been studying this stuff for 30 flipping years. Story to tell. My and head hurts. I've been studying it so Genesis. much. And that's all so I could My share Christ with people Easter. and be more effective at Somebody doing it. Somebody stole the body because nobody expected a resurrection. I like to, when I preach it, I like to say nobody expected nobody. You can use that. Okay. So here's what I learned right here in this right building over my that head, whatever, transformed yeah. my thinking about all of this. And again, this has been true. And none of this, this is as old as Thomas Aquinas. None of this is new. But oh, I just think it's ever, and I man that I is pulling out Thomas Aquinas. I want you to surface it. And I'm going to give you some tips if I have time and if you oh. know how to do that. But basically, in this building, Dr. Geisler, Norman Geisler, who, by the way, is the editor of the book. What's the book? He's the editor. Oh, yeah. We know Norman Geisler. Dirt of the Nye. Inerrancy, yeah. So if you, if you feel in my talk like, oh, my gosh, i got to choose between inerrancy and what Andy's saying. No. You're, the guy who no. edited inerrancy you know Norman Geisler, taught don't worry. me this. He's the one who taught me this. He's the one that you gave have the uh, Baker Encyclopedia of Christian Apologetics. That was a Norman Geisler book back in the day, about time, 20, 30 years ago. You have a bunch of other ago. people, yeah. and you have professors here doing the same thing, who gave me this framework <laughs> that allows me to view our faith the way I view it. You're not giving up anything. But bro, I, is there anybody else? I wonder, he's name dropping. He's speaking at a seminary. Is there anybody else that's like, whoa, 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 whoa. They want to distance themselves from what he's, you know, from, from him. <laughs> he's like associating himself with all these people. You know, it's, it talked about Rick Warren in his service a couple of weeks ago. Like, I, if it were me, I, I don't, bro, bro, no, don't use my name. This. No. I'm not going to argue with about you. Don't, about don't attack. Unhitch you me. To come here and argue you can with me un about disconnect this. the because hitch. That is important, let, but that's only important after we argue. Let my about trailer this. go. That's my point. So in, in my class with Dr. Geisler, who Let I'm still connected go. with, he's 85 years old and as feisty as ever. The, the, See, this is where he's kind of like rambling. This is why I suspect that he doesn't have any kind of idea about where he's going in this lecture. It's just, just a hunch, but the classical he kind of rambles. Methods, and he does this quite you know, a bit. Some of you study this, some of you will. That, you know, there's different ways of stating it. It's just five statements. It's basically God exists. Miracles are possible. The Gospels are reliable accounts of actual events. Therefore, Jesus rose from the dead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let me see where he's going with this, because it sounds like he's literally undercutting his own argument here. Hold Therefore, on, hold on. Jesus said can be see where he's going. No applause. Okay, let me do that again. So, this is this is your faith. Because we're stupid. This is the whole. We don't thing. know what you're saying. That God exists. Okay, they talk about that forever. Look at the proofs of God and evidence. We don't believe God. Christians. I tell people all the time. Thoughtful Christians don't believe God exists because Genesis tells us it's way better than that. God exists. Oh. Miracles are possible. Then we skip the entire Old Testament and we go right to the issue. But Jesus did. I mean, like the ancient Hebrews did. They believed in the word of god like before they had the gospels they had genesis the gospels you know? are reliable accounts of actual events but and they're the not gospels are reliable accounts no of they events, are jesus not the dead, no they're not jesus rose from the dead game on what about noah what about Noah? hey thank you the five ladies here who came to see me from the bible study the six ladies are applauding oh, thank you such a I terrible apologetic i can't thank you i don't know if sandra tipped you before this can't. anyway the, the, the point is you know i'm not please don't hear me going it's time to tell you something you don't know i hope you know this the first christian-esque statement the gospel is not the bible this is Christian. If people want to argue with us about our faith, well, no, no, don't tell me about the Bible. Let's start with in Mark and Luke and John, and they'll talk about the epistles. But the, the I, I thought we can't trust all this. I I really am confused. Is in this maybe this was a precursor to his whole doctrine of detach the Old Testament? I don't I don't know. I don't. It's hard to know what's rattling around up there. I I don't know. But maybe this was a precursor to that. I don't know because it seems like he's saying you can you. You can, these are reliable. The gospels are reliable. All right, where, where is my applause track? There it is. The gospels are reliable. But I, I mean, I'm, it seems like he doesn't actually believe the that. Only so I don't, literature, I don't know. the only documents we should ever feel pressure to defend is not the Bible. It's better than that. It's simply 
the gospel. So here's what I did. All those years ago, when I was nine, oh. about nine years ago, I thought, okay. I completely changed my vocabulary. Not completely. I, I altered my vocabulary. There's some things look, I quit saying. when. I, look at how he talks about this. I mean, so the Gospels are reliable. Like, if, you know, if, if your strategy was, which this is a bad strategy too, but just focus on the Gospels. I, ironically, when you read the Gospels themselves, these guys are, they're pulling stuff from the Old Testament. And the Old Testament, that's what validates their message, genius. They're using, they're quoting the Old Testament. If you tell somebody to read the Gospels, they're filled with Old Testament quotations. And that's their proof that what they're saying is true. Preached and teach, preached and taught, and wrote. I just changed my approach. I did not change what I believe, okay? I mean, I don't change what I believe. I changed my approach. I want you to adjust your approach because of what's going on in culture. Because you care about your older brothers and sisters, your nieces and nephews your kids one day and maybe your grandkids. So I adopted an approach, this is from my notes. I adopted an approach that always argues from and anchors to, that always argues from and anchors to the event of the resurrection rather than the authority of the Bible. That's all I did. Every sermon, every preaching, every teaching, when it comes to anchoring, what am I anchoring this to? I'm not anchoring because the Bible says, the, I quit saying the Bible says nine years ago. I don't think I've said it yet since unless it just slipped out. Quit saying the scripture says, quit saying all that. Because I quit believing it? No. It's a change of approach. And this is so easy to do. And it's so simple. All right, friends. I just honestly can't take any more. This is just driving me crazy. I think uh, uh, it's just a terrible apologetic. I would strongly encourage you. Th- this, is, this is just uh, from, you know, old Pastor AJ here. I would strongly encourage you to get to know the whole Bible. And um, I I spend like literally my life trying to create videos for y'all. And this isn't always easy to do, but you can go back and you can look at, I mean, I've like, I've interviewed PhDs in geology, um, people who have studied biology to show you that evolution is total trash, total trash. Uh, born out of the mind of atheists and liars, people who want to deceive other people in our culture. I I can't say it any simpler than that. Go back and look at those resources that I've made. Uh, And there are people that do it much, much better than I do. Check out other stuff. There's so many great organizations out there that can teach you how to study your Bible, especially in today's day and age. You don't even have to go to seminary. You can just, you can just, uh, you, you could just do it online. You could just learn stuff I'm t- on YouTube. You could just go on YouTube and learn an insane amount of stuff about Reformed theology, about uh, eschatology, about uh, proofs for the Bible, how we know that the Bible is the Word of God, and so on. But don't ever let some of the attacks of the critics determine your approach, determine your style, determine it, what you do. Let the Word of God, let your relationship with God, let the truth of God fashion and form you into a soldier, a savage soldier for Jesus, because I know you got that in you, and uh, you got God's Holy Spirit who is powerful to save, who is powerful to work through you, who is more powerful than Google, who can silence the mouths of atheists with just a word of wisdom, because all their knowledge is really just nonsense. Hey, if you haven't already done so, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, It just takes a second to like the video. If you did like it, uh, just please click that like button for me. If you're still watching, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, You can go to PastorAJ.com. You can check out other stuff. I've actually written several books. Uh, One of those books is End Times Mission. It it really will give you a great overview of eschatology. If that's a topic you're interested in studying, you can pick that up uh, actually on Amazon, but there's a link to it right on my website, PastorAJ.com. Uh, yeah, God bless you. And that's about all I got. I will see you friends and I'm looking forward to it in my next video. Later.